This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tung. With me, I have Abstract Award winner Aaron Arnold from the UK and the brand new editor-in-chief, David McManus of the Cardiovascular Digital Health Journal. David? Rod, thanks for, um, thanks for inviting us. Um, very happy to be here today to celebrate um, uh, Dr. Aaron Arnold's work um, entitled Machine Learning Successfully Discriminates ECG responses to his bundle pacing. It was the highest scoring abstract in the digital health category, uh, and it had some tough competition. It was one of almost 3,000 abstracts that were submitted to HRS 2020, uh, of which uh, 1,500 were accepted. So tough competition. His, his um, abstract caught our eye, Rod, because it was uh, a nice combination of two things that our cardiovascular digital health journal really focuses on. One, um, he focused on an, using an innovative methodology, um, uh, machine learning methodology, to um, conduct this, uh, a clinically important research study. Uh, and that's the second piece that we look for in the Cardiovascular Digital Health Journal. Our focus is on where technology meets clinical practice. And, and Dr. Arnold hit the nail on the head. Um, specifically, um, he focused on a, a topic of great clinical relevance, a challenge, a clinical challenge for many of us in electrophysiology, namely determining the adequacy of, of pacing lead placement um, uh, when trying to attempt his bundle pacing. So first of all, I want to say, Dr. Arnold, um, congratulations uh, on behalf of the Cardiovascular Digital Health Journal and HRS. But I'd also like to ask you a little bit of the background for how you began this research and what drove it. Thank you very much. Thank you to you both, Dr. Tong and Dr. McManus, and thank you to the whole committee for the award, for which we're very grateful. So let me just explain a little bit of the background to this. As you know, um, it can be very challenging to distinguish between the three responses to his bundle pacing we typically see, selective his bundle pacing, non-selective his bundle pacing, and myocardium-only capture. And we thought it would be useful to, um, to automate this process to make it a bit more robust and reliable. And we'd already been working on machine learning um, using artificial intelligence for ECG analysis for different applications such as accessory pathway localization. And we thought this would be a unique opportunity to really collaborate between these two strands of our research and our department and apply machine learning to his bundle pacing ECGs. So we identified um, over 55 patients, 57 exactly patients, who um, underwent EP system recordings during their his bundle pacing implants. And we extracted QRS complexes from them, over a thousand in fact, in total. And we then ran them through a one dimensional convolutional neural network, which is a form of supervised machine learning. This allow, over time allowed the network to get better and better at predicting exactly what the response was for each ECG. And eventually we were able to train a proof of concept neural network to a reasonable degree of accuracy, reaching over 80% accuracy for identifying selective bundle pacing and over 74% overall accuracy for all three classes. And we think that these findings and this automation of ECG analysis could be clinically useful. I did notice also in the abstract that the most difficult time that the convolutional neural network has is between myocardial and non-selective. And I do think that is true in clinical practice that we often need to change the output to be able to see. So that does make a lot of sense. David? Well, one of the uh, core questions that many clinicians have is whether or not uh, machine learning is gonna be like, you know, HAL 3000 and replacing them in clinical practice. Um, what do you see as an expert in this field as uh, this methodology is offering to cardiologists and electrophysiologists in the coming years? Thanks. That's, I think that's a really important question. I think that does sometimes even trouble people to think that uh, machine learning is sort of here to take over. But I think that's really not at all what we're aiming for in our research. We are trying to create tools and aids for clinicians to help them in their practice and actually augment their practice. Uh, there isn't really any form of replacement going on here. This still requires, first of all, um, a human to, to apply the, um, the algorithm's output in an appropriate way for the clinical setting and to make sure that the algorithm itself hasn't made a mistake. We will never reach 100% accuracy with these, accuracy, these algorithms and we do need expertise to go in, in, in concert with the algorithms. So I think, um, I think it could be very useful to help clinical practice for experts 
but it also has a role for people at the beginning of their journey with Hispanic pacing, because they may not necessarily have reached that expertise for the subtle ECG differentiation. And for them, this can be a really useful tool in that beginning of the learning curve. Well, AI clearly is the hot button topic for all of cardiovascular medicine. And it's great to see this come through in the form of his bundle pacing and conduction system pacing. I want to congratulate you, Arn, and your whole group at Imperial College. We look forward to seeing more from you. And David McManus, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing a lot more from you in the digital health world. Thank you very much to both of you. Thank you.